shop. This is place the movie film. And before we get started on today's video, I just want to apologize that it took me so too long to finally getting around to making this video. You see, I did a marathon of 2022 movies that I didn't get the chance to review during the year. I was hoping that the marathon would be done by early February, but unfortunately that didn't happen. I wasn't done until early March, but one thing's for sure. I'm not gonna review as many movies as I did this time when the next year rolls around. There were around 30 fucking movies which I got up to make a movie review on. Anyway, the rules for this list are the same as every year. This list is not based on what movies I will remember years from now. It's instead based on how much I fucking loved the movies during the year they were released and in some cases during early 2023. But these are all 2022 movies though. So anyway, this is my list of favorite movies of 2022. But as usual, there are going to be some honorable mentions. And my descriptions are very fucking brief, so those are just honorable mentions, nothing more. Amsterdam is a very interesting movie, and honestly I like it a lot. It's a great period piece. Barbarian is a fantastic horror movie, but not my favorite horror movie of the year. I will be discussing that on the actual fucking list. But it's still a great horror movie though, and scary as hell. Firestarter is a... Fun movie, what else can I say? I was pleasantly surprised by Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was so damn close to making it on the actual list, but it didn't in the end. But yeah, it surprised the hell out of me. It's not as good as the 1974 classic, but it's very damn close to that quality, very damn close. And the last honorable mention is a third movie called The Lost City. So, with that all out of the way, Let's get started on the actual fucking list, shall we? Number 15, Jurassic World Dominion. You know what I find very fucking interesting about this movie? It's that it shows how dinosaurs are like in a real world. The dinosaurs go to the main fucking land. I don't mean a bunch of dinosaurs attacking a fucking city like usually happens in those kinds of movies, no. It's about dinosaurs fitting in the real world and how they affect the ecosystem and stuff like that. Yeah, I find that very interesting. I know that it has that stupidity from the Fallen Kingdom that is a fucking clone. I really don't fucking care. I still find the movie very interesting because of what I stated. And it has many interesting characters as well. Number 14. Halted Transylvania, Transformania. I had a fucking blast with this movie. I really enjoy all of the Hotel Transylvania movies. I think that they are all great satire. And this one is no different. This one is about the fucking monsters, including Dracula himself, turning into humans. But that fucking orc who is a human turns into a fucking monster. That's a very interesting concept and it really made the movie fucking work. Yeah. Now, it isn't as fucking awesome as the second or the third one, but I still enjoyed it quite a fucking lot. Number 13, Elvis. I don't need to give an introduction who Elvis was, as he is one of the most fucking iconic musicians of all time. So, this is basically a biographical movie about Elvis, and he unfortunately has to deal with an assistant who fucking owns him. Elvis never gets to go to another fucking country that has to stay in the United States thanks to that cunt. Yeah, but this movie is based on a true story, so unfortunately that lines with reality. Poor Elvis, he deserved so much better. The real Elvis probably never got to go to another fucking country and that sucks. Aside from that though, we also see a lot of interesting people in Elvis' life. So this is his mother, his father, a very good friend of him. And yeah, it's an absolutely fucking fantastic movie. It's not my favorite musical biographical movie of all time though. That would be Bohemian Raspberry. But this one comes very deep close to being one of my favorites though. I love every fucking second of it. Number 12, Bullet Train. Now most of this movie takes place in a train. And it makes damn sure that it never leaves that fucking train. Now, this is an over the top action movie, but it doesn't take itself too seriously. And for that, it really fucking works. It's about a guy who thinks that he has a very bad luck, but in reality, he has very good luck. Very fucking good luck, as a matter of fact. Yeah, this movie is a very mindless action movie taking place at a fucking train. There are a few things that don't take place at that fucking train, but they are barely fucking there. Most of it takes place at the fucking train. Like I can say, it's just a fun mindless fun ride. Number 11, Strange World. 
Now, this is a very visually appealing movie. In fact, it's the most visually appealing movie of the year. And it has a great story at the top of it. Basically, some Aesol father abandons his son and he discovers a great fucking technology that helps a lot of people in the fucking town he lives in. And then he goes on a journey to a fucking wonderful looking world, which is why this movie is called Strange World. Yeah, it's a fucking great movie, visually appealing and fucking awesome. Number 10, The Boober King. You know, I legitimately confused this with a Pink Panther movie. Which is that there was a Pink Panther movie released that year. Yeah, it has a similar fucking premise, except this is a movie based on true events. Basically, it's about a woman in some barbaric civilization who is trying to fight and lead a bunch of people. Yeah, it is pretty similar to the Black Panther, except there is a woman that leads instead of a guy. But overall though, it's still a great fucking movie. It's similar to... Blank Panther, but still fucking awesome. Number 9, Halloween Ends. You know, I don't really consider this a good horror movie. I like it more as a fun popcorn flick. Oh, and by the way, I feel the same way about Halloween Kills. I think these movies are great as fun popcorn flicks, but I don't think they are great as horror movies. Don't worry, later on in the list, you will see a great fucking horror movie. Which is good at being a fucking horror movie. Anyway, as for this movie, Michael Myers is fucking framing some guy into killing a bunch of people. I must admit, that's very fucking clever. It's something that has never been done before in a Halloween movie. And it totally works. And don't trust those bullshit trailers that talk about how this is a showdown between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. Although she is a major character in the movie, and is thankfully no longer at the hospital, that's not what she's fucking there for. Seriously, fuck the assholes who made that misleading trailer. Anyway, yeah, this movie's hell of a lot of fun. What else can I say? Number eight, the black phone. My god, this movie surprised the hell out of me. And it would have been a mistake to make this video without watching that movie. So basically, some creepy guy kidnaps a bunch of people one at a time. And in the basement, there is some phone where creepy shit starts happening when you answer it in that guy's basement. Yeah, this movie is scary as hell. And that's what I fucking love about it. It's definitely different from most horror movies, which I appreciate. It is creative in its premise, and it's also executed in a creative way. You should definitely check this movie out if you haven't already. Number 7, Violent Night. Now, I'm not a big fan of... Ed Santa. In fact, I've made it clear in many of my videos that I think it's the worst Christmas movie of all time. However, there is one R-rated Christmas movie which I'm a huge fucking fan of. And that is Violent Night. It's basically about a Santa Claus who kicks a lot of ears. Now this movie is a homage to a lot of great movies. Die Hard, Home Alone. Yeah, mainly those two. But it's such a great fucking homage. And honestly, this is a movie I'm willing to watch. Every Christmas, just like I watch a Nipple's Fish, Santa Claus, TV Escape Clause, and a very hard to cover Christmas. Yep, I'll say this is definitely a fucking movie I will be watching every Christmas, just like I do with these Christmas classics. Number 6, Top Gun Maverick. Now, I've been wondering if I need to see the first movie in order to be able to enjoy this one. And after having seen it, I can tell you for a fact that you absolutely fucking do not need to see the first one. This movie expresses everything completely fine on its own. Now there are a lot of movies out there that are about old people who retire to are forced out of retirement. But this movie turns that concept around completely. Instead of paying about someone who is forced out of retirement, it's about someone who is old and should retire but refuses to retire. Hell yeah. And he never gives up on his job. Now, he's basically... A guy who is experienced with military aircraft and this movie fucking shows. Oh man, I do a hate to see this fucking movie after I heard so many good things about it. But after having seen it, yeah, it's definitely a fucking awesome movie. Hence why it's on this list. Number 5, The Bad You. Now basically it's about people who go to a strange fucking island and they are told that they are going to a very fancy restaurant on that island. But there's a bunch of strange shit going on at that restaurant. And yeah, bad shit starts happening. Honestly, this is a great horror movie. And honestly, this movie is also a masterpiece. It's fucking unpredictable. And I like how this restaurant is very unusual and bad shit is happening there. A strange restaurant with a bunch of bad shit going on. I like that concept. 
And that's the film that makes this movie a masterpiece. But it's not my favorite horror movie of the year though. I will be talking about that later. Number four, Push and Boots, The Last Wish. Now I didn't have high expectations for this movie at first. Since the first Push and Boots movie is mediocre. But after seeing so many fucking positive reviews of the movie, I was fucking impressed. This is definitely a great fucking movie. Now normally a movie about wish granting, the limit of wishes only applies to one person. For example, a genie would only grant three wishes to one person. But another person can make those three wishes as well. But in this fucking movie, there is a wishing star and only one fucking person can make the wish. So a bunch of fucking people go on many adventures to get that fucking wishing star. Since there's only one. Now Puss and Puss is at his last life. He fucking wasted the other eight lives by being reckless. So he wants to fucking get the star. And honestly, I was surprised by the amount of swearing in this movie. The word hell is used once in the dialogue, which isn't that or common in PG rated movies, but it is pretty rare in PG rated animated movies. And the words fuck and shit are used as well. Now obviously those words are censored since this is a fucking PG rated movie, but the fact that they are there regardless surprised the hell out of me. And it has a lot of great characters too. In fact, it would take me a long time to talk about all the great fucking characters in this movie. And yeah, this movie is fucking awesome and definitely deserves all the praise that it got. Hell yeah. Number 3, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. It's very rare when a video game movie is actually good. What's even more rare is that when two movies are the same, Video game movie versions are good. And what's even rarer is when it's even fucking better than the first one. Yep. I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. Seeing Tails as Sonic's friend in this movie was beyond fucking awesome. Or not just his friend, but partner. And Dr. Robotnik for so many minutes to get off that fucking mushroom planet. Yeah, he's a fucking genius, that's why. And seeing Knuckles in this fucking movie is fucking awesome. And the connection between Knuckles, Sonic and Dr. Robotnik just goes as you would expect. But it's still fucking awesome to see Knuckles in this movie though. He is my favorite Sonic character after all. Now, of course some of the pros that I have with the first one apply to this one here too. Robotnik's goofiness still is not funny to me and it's just lame. Speaking of lame jokes, I fucking love how Knuckles points out how Sonic's jokes suck. That's what makes him so fucking perish. That and how fucking powerful he is. Yeah, this is a fucking absurd movie and I'm excited to see the third one. Number two, Beast. This is definitely without a doubt my favorite horror movie of 2022. And wow, it's fucking brutal. Basically some guy from the United States visits Africa with his two girls and they go and go on a tour browsing the nature. But some fucking vicious fucking lion kills people one by one. And not even a fucking gun can stop that fucking lion. Damn, that lion is a scary motherfucker for sure. And because of how fucking scary he is, that's exactly what made this movie so fucking scary. I was scared throughout that he was gonna fucking kill the main characters. In fact, I thought he would do it successfully soon. Man, this movie is fucking brutal. God damn. Number one, Thor, Love and Thunder. Wow. I had a lot of fucking fun with this movie. I mean, it is full of stupid moments for sure, but none of these stupid moments really bothered me. In fact, they made me laugh. And ignoring that, this movie discusses how Thor lost everything much fucking better than Avengers Endgame did. And yeah. It is also a great villain who is scary as hell. And despite his very goofy lines, Thor is still a great fucking hero in this movie. So, I fucking love it. It has a lot of stupid moments, but it's enjoyable as hell. And I do not think that it's great in the sense that it's so bad that it's good. I think it's a genuinely great movie and my favorite movie of last year. So that has just been my list of favorite movies of 2022. Again, I apologize that it took me so damn long to finally getting around to upload in this video. Next time, I won't watch nearly 30 of these to prepare for the list. So that obviously took too damn long. Anyway, most of what I said, very brief descriptions of 
why I like these movies. If you want my full opinion on them, I also reviewed them. A link to all the reviews is in the video description below. And in my own case, there is even a link to a spoiler movie review. So I did a spoiler movie review of my favorite movie of that year, which is of course Thor, Love and Thunder. So check this all out if you're interested. Well, that's basically it. Thank you all for watching the whole fantastic day.